So now that we've been introduced to electricity and we've learned how voltage, current, and resistance are all connected mathematically through Kirchhoff's law, we're ready to start learning about the various types of circuits. Before we dive too deep into that, we need to learn how to just draw and read a simple circuit. So let's go ahead and start drawing one. Let's start with two parallel lines, one longer than the other. And then we're going to connect them with this almost box shape here. And then here in the middle, I'm going to connect these two lines with just sort of the squiggle shape. And what this squiggle shape is here, this is the resistance in our circuit. So our resistor. And as for these parallel lines here, the longer one is the positive end, and the shorter one is the negative end. And if you're wondering, positive and negative end of what? Well, that is our power supply. So it might be a battery. It might be a solar cell. It could be just an outlet. But the point is, it's providing power in some way or another. And then you can see the negative end is connected to the positive end through some circuit or some wire. And, of course, a resistor somewhere in the middle. And that's really all there is to drawing a circuit. But real quick, there's a point I want to drive home. So originally, when scientists first discovered electricity and started learning how it worked, they sort of had this conventional way of thinking. So we'll call this the conventional method. And what happened is, what they thought was, that the electrons went from the positive end to the negative end. And then when engineers started building things with power, with electricity, they tended to follow that method as well. But since then, in the last 100 years, we figured out, well, maybe more than 100 years, I'm not really sure the exact date, but we figured out that there's a true method, and that is the uh, electrons actually are negative, so they're traveling from the negative end to the positive end. So what ended up happening was the scientists sort of switched and transitioned and adopted this new method that's more correct, whereas engineers kind of stayed stubborn and stuck with the conventional method. But the reason why I take a second to explain this and drive this home is that it doesn't really matter which method you use, which way you look at it. Whether the electrons start from the negative, hit the resistor, and go to the positive end, or the electrons start from the positive, hit the resistor, and go to the negative end. Your math winds up being the same in the end. But with that, let's go ahead and draw ourselves a simple math circuit, or a simple circuit with math in it. Let's use it and read it and apply some math. So let's say this is a 12 volt battery or power source on our circuit and this resistor up here let's say is 10 ohms. So we have 12 volts pushing electrons, 12 volts of pressure pushing electrons and 10 ohms of resistance fighting back slowing the flow. My question to you is what is the flow or what is the current? Well using Ohm's law over here to the right we can see that current is just voltage over resistance. And we know both those things. We just put voltage on top and resistance on bottom, and our voltage is 12 volts, and our resistance is 10 ohms. That's pretty easy. Hopefully, you don't need a calculator to figure this one out. I equals, or current equals, 1.2 amps. So hopefully, that was too easy. With that, let's go ahead and let's try a little bit more difficult one. So this time, I actually want to draw the resistor off to the left, and that's just to drive home the idea that it doesn't really matter where the resistor is in our circuit as long as it's between the positive and negative ends. Let's go ahead and say this is a 200 ohm resistor, and let's say that this is a 16 volt battery. So the question is the same, what is the current? And the equation is the same, it's just voltage divided by resistance. And we already know the voltage and resistance again. That's kind of the point here. We know the voltage is 16 volts right above. And we know the resistance is 200 ohms. And this is a little bit harder of a math problem. So we're going to go ahead and pull out our handy dandy calculator. And we're going to type in 16 divided by 200. And what do we get? We get 0 0.08 for our current. So we get equals 0 0.08 amps. And I'm actually going to rewrite that as a different version of the same answer as 80 milliamps. And if you're wondering how I converted that, all I did was say, well, milli is a thousand, so that's three zeros, or in other words, three decimal places. And so I just moved the decimal place three places, and we sort of get the decimal here off to the right, 
And if you look here, it's in the exact same place. So if that one was too easy as well, let's see if we can change it up a little bit more. And this time, let's go ahead and draw that resistor off to the right. Again, just to drive home the idea that it doesn't matter where the resistor is in the circuit as long as it's somewhere in the middle. And let's go ahead and say this time we have a 500 ohm resistor. So we're getting kind of big or at least big in comparison. And let's say we don't know what our voltage is this time. But let's say our current is 24 milliamps. So the question is, what is our voltage? Well, if you look back at Kirchhoff's equation, you can see that it's just current times resistance. So that's pretty easy. So all we're going to do is take current and multiply it by our resistance. But before we do, we need to convert milliamps to amps because we have to use regular amps in our math equations. So if you want to convert milliamps to amps, you're going to do very similar to what you did before. Milli means a thousand or three zeros. So we're going to move the decimal place three places to the left. And what we get is 0 0.024 amps. And if you're wondering where or why we would write both, why would we, we wouldn't just use one versus the other, is 24 milliamps is easier to say and write out than, it, than 0 0.024 amps is. And so if you're looking at a battery or a circuit, it'll be written as 24 milliamps, but if you're doing the math, you have to convert it. And then we'll go ahead and multiply this by 500 ohms, because that's what the equation says to do, and I'm bad at math. So I'll pull out my handy-dandy calculator, and we'll type this in, 0 0.024 times 500. And what do we get? We get 12. So we get voltage equals 12 volts. Let's do one more quick equation. This time we'll draw everything sideways. Again, just um, drive home the idea that these are all still simple circuits. But this time, let's say we want to know what the resistance is. We know everything else. So we know that... Let's say the voltage is 16 volts again. Let's keep it really simple. Let's go ahead and say the current is 2 amps. And so the formula is pretty simple. Resistance equals voltage divided by current. And we know both of these numbers. The current is 16 volts. I'm sorry, the voltage is 16 volts. And the current is 2 amps. And hopefully you don't need a calculator for this, and if you do, you can go ahead and type it in yourself, but it's pretty obvious. 16 divided by 2 is 8, so the resistance is 8 ohms. 